Okay, so good afternoon class. Yung lesson natin ngayon for module 5 is regarding torsion. So ito na rin yung last topic natin for prelim period. So define muna natin ang torsion. Torsion, also known as torque, describes a moment that is acting upon an object around the same axis in which the object lies. A moment is measured is a measurement of the propensity of a force to create motion around either a point or an axis and is calculated as a force upon the object multiplied by the distance of the force from the chosen origin. So sabi dito, consider a bar to be rigidly attached at one end and twisted at the other end by a torque or a twisting moment T. Equivalent to force times distance, which is applied perpendicular to the axis of the bar as shown in the figure. Such bar is said to be in torsion. So, kung pag natin ang unit ng torsion, so sabi dito, yung torsion tin natin is equals to force times distance. Where yung force natin, alam natin in metric system, ito is in newtons. And ang distance na ginagamit natin is meter. So ang unit ng torsion natin in metric system is in newton meter. So next naman is torsional shearing stress. So sabi dito, for a solid or hollow circular shock, subject to a subject to a twisting moment T, the torsional shearing stress tau at a distance rho from the center of the shaft is, so tau is equals to T rho over J and tau max is equals to TR over J. So ano ba yung pinagkaiba nito? So yung rho dito is the notion lang naman siya. Sa ibang libro, ginagamit dito is R or C. Which is sabi dito is yung outer radius ng shaft. So dito ang ano natin for tau max. On, on tau max, the maximum shear stress in the shaft. Which of course in the outer surface. So yung tinaman natin is the resultant internal torque acting at the cross section. Its value is determined from the method of sections. And the equation of moment of equilibrium applied to the shaft's longitudinal axis. Ang J naman natin is the polar moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area. And sabi ko nga kanina, yung C and R, nat or R natin, is siya yung outer radius ng shaft. So dito para makuha ang ano, uh, for series stress para makuha natin yung polar moment of inertia, meron tayo dito formula na ginagamit. So kung mapapansin ninyo, nag, uh, napansin ko na meron akong typographical error doon sa learning module ninyo. So ito yung dito yun sa part na ito. So ito yun. I think D squared yun na ilagay ko dyan so dapat D to the 4. So for solid shaft with a diameter D, ang formula natin for polar moment of inertia is pi over 32 times D to the fourth. Ang tau max natin or max torsional shearing stress is equals to 16T times pi D cube. Kapag meron naman tayong hollow shaft with an outer diameter D and inner diameter uh, small letter D, so J is equals to pi over 32 outer diameter uh, times quantity outer diameter to the fourth minus inner diameter to the fourth. And ang tau max naman natin is 16 times T B divided by pi multiply to outer diameter to the fourth minus inner diameter to the fourth. So next naman. is the power transmitted by the shaft. Sabi dito, a shaft rotating with a constant angular velocity 
denoted by W in radians per second is being acted by a twisting moment T. The power transmitted by the shaft is P is equals to T times W. So where yung P natin is yung power, T is yung torque, and yung W natin is angular velocity in rads. So ano nga ba unit nito? Ang unit natin for this is Ang unit natin for this is in what? Kaya naman kapag yan natin yan is alam natin ang 1 watt natin is equal to 1 joule per second. And alam naman natin na ang joule per ang 1 joule natin is 1 newton meter per second. So ito yung mga ginagamit natin diyan. So ito yung magiging unit natin, pwede nyo i-denote by watts or pwede yung joule per second or newton meter per second. Sabi naman dito, for a machinery, the frequency of shaft rotation F is often, often reported. This is a measure of revolutions or cycle the shaft makes per second and expressed in hertz. Ang 1 hertz natin is 1 cycle per second. Since 1 cycle is 2 pi rad, then W is equal to 2 pi F. And so the above power equation can be also written as P is equal to 2 pi times torsion times F. So ito yung pwede yung gamitin ibang formula. Depende na lang dun sa given kung anong formula yung i-apply ninyo. So for shaft design, Gamit yung formula na from ano natin, power transmitted. Sabi dito, knowing T and the allowable shear stress for the material or tau allowable, we can determine the size of the shaft's cross section using the torsion formula. Specifically, the design or geometric parameter J over C becomes J over C is equals to T divided by tau allowable. Or kung sa ibang reference book, J over R is equal to T divided by tau allowable. And yung ano natin dito is yung angle of twist or yung rotation niya. So the angle of twist is defined as the angle theta or yung angle of twist natin through which the bar length L will twist is the formula natin. Theta is equal to TL over JG. And na makukuha nating result dito is expressed in radians. So kapag ang pinapahanap sa inyo is yung degrees or in terms of degree, kung ilan degrees siya nag-rotate, kailangan nyo siyang i-convert by multiplying result natin ng 180 over 5. So dito apply natin sa example. So the solid shaft in the tube as shown in the figure is made of a material having an allowable shear stress of 75 megapascal. Determine the maximum torque that can be applied to each cross section and show the stress acting on the small element of material at point A of shaft and points B and C of the tube. So given sa atin dito, syempre given required tayo. So ang given lang na data natin dito is yung tau allowable. So given, given tayo ng allowable shear stress na 75 megapascal. So ano yung required sa atin? Yung required sa atin is yung Torsion at A and torsion natin at B. Kasi so, diba sabi nga kapag hollow tube, ang pinagaanuhan natin is yung torsion ng outer, uh, outer radius natin. So syempre before tayo mag-solve is, ano muna tayo, uh, free body diagram. So FBD natin. 
So, para dun sa solid shaft, ito yung magiging itsura niya. Ito yung torque natin sa solid shaft, which is work case natin dito is A. So, given tayo ng radius na 100 mm. So, for ano naman, uh, tube B. So, meron din tayong torque dito for the tube. So, tawagin natin tube B or TB torque B. And given tayo ng uh, outer na 100 mm and inner na 75 millimeters. So dito, ang ano natin, ang una ko so pinapahanap sa atin kasi di ba is yung torsion. So alam naman natin kung given tayo ng tau max, ang gagamit, kailangan natin yung polar moment of inertia. So yun muna yung uunahin natin isolve. So alam naman natin, for solving for J, meron tayong formula na uh, Solve na natin yung J para dun sa shop and then yung J natin para dun sa tube. Kasi alam naman natin na magkaibang value yung makukuha natin dyan. Kasi meron tayong sol formula for polar moment of inertia for a solid and hollow shop. So for, so for solid shop, ang formula natin is pi over 32 d to the fourth. So, substitute lang natin yung value. So, pi over 32. So, yung diameter, kung given tayo dito ng radius na 100 mm, so, ang diameter natin is 200 millimeters. And converting 200 millimeter into meters, is, ito is magiging 0.2 meters. So, 0.2 to the fourth. So, ang J natin is 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 4 raised to the 4. So, solving naman tayo ng J ng para sa tube natin so for the hollow uh, shaft natin or for the tube, ang formula naman natin is pi over 32 times outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner diameter raised to 4. Substitute natin yung mga given. So the outer diameter natin is 0.2. And inner diameter natin is 75 millimeters. So 75 times 2 divided by 1,000. So ito is magiging 0.15 raised to 4. So yung J natin for the tube is 1.07 times 10 raised to negative 4 meters raised to 4. So ngayon, pwede na natin gamitin yung formula natin for tau max. So solving muna tayo dun sa shaft. So tau max for shaft is equal to TC over uh, J. Yung J natin para sa shaft. So yung T natin Wala tayong T kasi yun nga yung hinahanap natin, ba Yung torque. So substitute natin dito yung given na tau max. So 75 times 10 raised to 6 is equals to yung torque natin sa shaft or yung torque A natin times yung C which is yung radius, 0.1 divided by yung J natin or polar moment of inertia for the shaft, 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 4. Solving for torque natin sa shaft, ang makukuha nating value dyan is 117,809.7245 newton meter. So kapag ganito nakakuha kayo ng ano, huwag yun ang i-round pa or i-refer pa to, i-convert pa to sa gagamit ng prefix. Kasi ang laking number, kapag di-round up nito, magiging 118 mega, uh, mega newton meter ang gagamitin ninyo. Ang laking value nung nawawala. 
So huwag niyo nang i-round off to itong raw value yung gagamitin natin. Ito na yung sagot. No need to express using metric prefixes. So next naman, pinapahanap naman is for shop uh, I for the tube. So alam natin formula, tau max for the tube. Ito yung TA natin, na yung TS natin, ito yung TA. So tau max natin for the tube, same formula, EC over J. So Substitute lang natin yung value. So, 75 times 10 raised to 6 divided by... So, ito ang J2 natin para sa tube. So, 75 times 10 raised to 6 is equals to tau or torque. Torque natin for the tube times uh, diameter na point 0.1. Divided by J natin para sa tube na 1.07 times 10 raised to negative 4. Solving for torque sa tube or TB natin, T sub B, ang makukuha natin dyan is 80,533.99 newton meter. So ayan yung sagot natin for this sample problem. So, sin tayo sa next example. So, sabi dito, an aluminum shaft with a constant diameter of 50 mm is loaded by torques applied to gears attached to it as shown in the figure. Using a G of 28 GPa, determine the relative angle of twist of gear D, regal, uh, gear D relative to gear A. So, syempre, first step natin dito is given and required. So, ilista lang muna natin yung given and required natin. And then, diagram. So, given tayo dito. Diameter of 50 millimeter. Pag kinonvert natin into meter, yan ito is 0 0.05 meters. Next is G of 28 times 10 raised to 9. Pascal. So required is angle of this theta natin at DA. So again, gaya nung sinabi ko dun sa ano natin, uh, nung una pa lang, assumption natin na moment or rotation natin is clockwise positive. So denote ko lang dito. Assume a clockwise positive rotation. So kapag clockwise yung nakita nating torque, ibig sabihin positive. Kapag counterclockwise is negative. So before tayo, kasi ito, pwede na i-rebrew nila ito yung free body diagram natin. May isa pa tayong kailangang ipakita dito para maging guide to solving. Ito is yung torque diagram natin or loading diagram. So drawing lang ako dito ng ano. So ito yung at D. So ilalagay lang natin na D, C, B, A. So, ito ay 2 meters, 3 meters, and 2 meters. So, sabi dito, 800 newton meter rotating clockwise. So, positive. So, kapag positive, sa taas tayo ng axis natin. So, list na lang dyan, 800 newton meter. So next, nag-rotate tayo ng 1-1. 1,100 newton meter, counterclockwise. So mula dito, bababa tayo ng 1-1. So matitira lang sa atin dito ay ilan lang? 300 lang kasi 800 minus 1,100 is 300. So it's 300 newton meter. 
And then mula dito, is aangat naman tayo. Wait lang ah. Yan oh. So sabi nga yun, bumaba tayo dito ng 300. So sabi ito yung B natin. Uh, C, B. Tapos sabi dito, nag-rotate ulit tayo clockwise. 900 naman. So negative 300 plus 900, ito ay 600 newton meter. So dito, 600. And then, Meron tayong rotation na counterclockwise sa 600. So ano yung magiging movement natin pababa? So dito nasara natin yung load natin. So kung meron na tayo dito ng loading diagram, ito yung susundan natin. So alam naman natin, ang formula natin for angle of twist is EL over JG. So solve na natin yung J or polar polar moment of inertia since solid shaft ito hindi naman sinabi na hollow isang isang diameter lang yung given so ang gagamitin natin is formula for solid shaft which is J is equal to pi over 32 b to the fourth so substitute lang natin so pi over 32 ang diameter natin is 0.05 meters So, raise to 4. Makakakuha tayo ng polar moment of inertia. 6.13 times 10 raise to negative 7 meters. Raise to 4. And then, meron na tayong J. Pwede na nating i-apply dito sa formula kasi meron na tayo lahat nung given. So kagaya no sa axial load natin, meron tayong multiple components dito for uh, angle of twist AD or DA. So pwede nating i-rewrite ito na since isang value lang naman yung J natin and G, pwede nating ilabas siya. So ganito yung area siya i-rewrite na 1 over JG is equals to sig uh, summation TL. And then, substitute natin yung mga value. AD is equal to 1 divided by 6.13 times 10 raised to negative 7. Multiply natin ito sa G or 28 gigapascal. 28 times 10 raised to 9. And multiply natin ito doon sa TL natin. So meron tayo. So dito titingnan natin yung loading diagram sa taas. So positive. So 800 times 2 yung length natin. Sa baba, so meron tayo pababa na 300. So negative 300 minus 300 times 3 meters. And then meron tayo sumunod na 600 pataas. So plus 600 times 2. So, simplifying lang or direct solving using your calculator, makakakuha tayo ng theta DA na 0.110589949 rad. Pero kapag ang ano sabi, express your answer in degrees, so multiply nyo lang ito ng 180 over pi. In terms of degrees, ang angle of twist natin is 6.34 degrees. So ito yung sagot dito sa problem na ito. Proceed tayo sa next example.
So, sabi dito, a solid steel shaft AB shown in the figure is used to be uh, used to transmit a 5 horsepower from the motor M to which it is attached. If the shaft rotates at angle of angular velocity of 175 RPM and the steel have an allowable shear stress of tau allowable is equal to 100 MPa, determine the required diameter of the shaft to the nearest millimeter. So first step natin is given and required. And then free body diagram. So given tayo dito ng yung power daw natin is 5 horsepower. Karan tayong tau allowable na 100 times 10 raised to 6 pascal. And then meron tayo angular velocity na 175 RPM. So yung magiging FBD natin is itong figure na mismo. So i-redraw nyo lang siya. And then pwede na tayong ma- Ang required naman sa atin is hanapin yung diameter nung shaft natin. So ang pinapahanap sa atin is yung diameter Yung shaft. So, paano natin isa solve to? Gamit yung mga parameters or data na meron tayo. So, una, kailangan muna natin unity of units. So, naka horsepower yung power natin dito. Kailangan natin to i-convert into metric system. So, P is equal to 5 horsepower using a conversion factor na 1 HP is equals to 746 watts. So cancel out yung horsepower. Makakakuha tayo ng 3,730 watts. And then yung angular velocity natin, di ba sabi ang value natin is rad per second. So meron tayo RPM. So convert muna natin yan. So revolutions per minute. So, meron tayo rev per minute. Alam naman natin na ang one revolution natin is kailangan meron tayong 2 pi rad. Kasi di ba ang isang rotation natin buo is 360 degrees or in radians ito is in 2 pi. So, 2 pi rad. Again, and then 1 minute natin is 60 seconds. So, solving for W to cancel out. Cancel out. Ang value natin dito is 35 over 6 pi in terms of rads per second. So, ngayon kunin natin yung torque na applied sa kanya using yung power uh, transmitted in the shaft formula. Kasi yung torque na yon is gagamitin naman natin para sa shaft design formula kasi yun yung formula na kailangan natin or yun lang yung formula sa atin na pwede natin makuha yung uh, diameter parameter natin. So P is equal to TW. So meron tayong P na 3,730 so, ano to, ah? watts per second. So, watts to, diba? So, natin 3,730 watts. Is equal to T times 35 over 6 pi rad. 35 over 6 pi rad per second. So solving for T, ang makukuha natin value ng T natin is 203.536 newton meter. So ngayon nakuha na natin yung T. 
pwede natin i-apply na yan dun sa formula natin. From uh, shaft design formula, sabi dito, J over C is equals to torque divided by how allowable. So substitute lang natin yung mga values. So alam naman natin na yung J natin or yung polar moment of inertia. So sabi dito solid steel shaft, di ba? So ang gagamitin natin formula dito is for solids. For solid shaft. So pi over 32 times D raised to 4. And alam naman natin na ang diameter natin is equals to 2C. Kasi di ba 2 times ng radius natin is yung diameter. So substitute natin dito. J is equal to pi over 32 times 16 times C to the fourth. So bakit naging ganito? Kasi di ba kung 2C raised to the fourth natin yan. So yung 2 raised to 4 is 16 and then C raised to 4. And then cancel ang simplify lang natin. So makukuha natin value ng J dito ay pi over 2 C to the 4th times C to the 4th. So substitute natin siya dito sa formula natin. So magkakaroon tayo ng Pi C raised to 4 divided by 2C is equal to torque divided by tau allowable. So cancel natin to yung C. So magkakaroon tayo ng 3. So yung ano natin dito is pi C cube divided by 2. Meron ba tayong torque? Yes, meron tayo yung 203.536. Divided by tau allowable na 100 megapascal. And then, ilipat lang natin to Multiply both sides by 2. And then, divided by pi para si cube yung matira sa atin dito sa left side. So, C cube is equal to 2 times 203.536. Divided by pi times 100 times 10 raised to 6 pascal. Take natin yung cube root nito para makuha natin yung C. So C is equal to 0 0.0109 meters. So diameter yung hinahanap. So multiply lang natin to into 2. So yung diameter natin is point 218 meters. 0 0.0218 meters. So proceed tayo sa next example. So sabi dito, determine the angle of twist of the end A of the an A3016 shaft as shown in the figure. What is the angle of twist of A relative to C? The shaft has a diameter of 200 millimeters. So meron tayo dito ng dalawang uh, value na hinahanap. Una, yung angle of twist ng buo. And then yung angle of twist natin from A to C. So syempre, first step natin dito palagi is given and required. So ano yung mga given values natin? Given tayo ng diameter ng shaft na 200 millimeter or 0.2 meters. Given tayo ng G. 75 times 10 raised to 9 pascal.
And then yung ano natin, required value or yung pinapahanap sa atin. Is yung angle of twist natin sa AD or yung buong shaft. And then angle of twist natin with regards to AC. So again, ito na yung magiging free body diagram natin. I-redraw nyo na lang siya. Pero when dealing with torque sa ganito, pwede nata... Uh, Required din kayo munang i-drawing yung torque diagram kung applicable siya sa problem. So drawing muna natin yung torque diagram nito. So meron tayo ditong length natin ay 3 meters 2 meters and then ito ay 1.5 meters. So natin to A, B, C, ito and ito yung D. So una meron tayong counterclockwise na 80 kN. So again, counterclockwise positive assumption tayo. So lagay na lang din natin dito. Assume clockwise positive. So, kung counterclockwise ito, so negative. So, dito sa baba. Ito ay... Wait lang ha. So, ito yung B natin. So, kung counterclockwise ito, so 80 kN sa baba. So, so natin ito yung 80 kN per meter. And then, pagdating dito sa point B, nagkaroon tayo ng clockwise rotation. So, clockwise, so positive. So, negative 80 plus 150. Meron tayong 70. So, aangat tayo dito ng 70. Ayan, so ito 70. And then, nag-travel lang siya ng diretso hanggang makarating sa point C. Pagdating sa point C, nagkaroon tayo ng counterclockwise rotation na 60 kilonewton meter. So from 70, bababa tayo ng 60. So dito, magkakaroon tayo ng 10 kilonewton lang. Kilonewton per meter. And then, nagdire-diretso siya hanggang point D. And pagdating sa point D, nagkaroon tayo ng 10 kilonewton na rotation na counterclockwise. So bababa siya. Kaya ang ano dito is ayan, napunta siya sa origin natin, or zero, yung torque pagdating natin dito. So again, solid shaft ito. So first step natin, syempre, solve for J muna tayo para dire-diretso tayo pagdating doon sa formula natin. So J is equal to pi over 32 D to the fourth. So substitute lang tayo. So, pi over 32. So, diameter natin 0.2. So, raise to 4. And J natin is 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 4 meters raised to the 4th. And then, yung angle of this equation natin. So, TL over JG. And again, pwede natin itong i-rewrite kasi nga isa lang naman yung gina, material natin. Pwede natin itong i-rewrite na equal to sa 1 over JG times summation of TL. So ano muna natin dito for angle of twist natin sa buong rod or buong shaft. So rewrite lang natin. 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 4 times G of 75 times 10 raised to 9. Multiply lang natin ito sa lang. So times so, based on dito, pababa. So, negative 80 times 3. Pataas. So, plus 
सेवेंटी टाइम्स टू एंड देन प्लस सो टेन का से टेन अंदर इतना टेन होने सो नासा ता सो पॉजिटिव पारें टेन टाइम्स वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड वक्त जो का कलिमुतन इमुल्टिप्लाई इतो इनटू वन थाउसन का से किलो न्यूटन यन ने सो सॉल्विंग फॉर अन्ना टेन Theta AD is negative seven point twenty one times ten raised to negative three rad, or in degrees, or I mean in ano so neko negative yung mabas dito ibig sabihin malita yun ang assumption ng rotation. So since clockwise positive tayo kung negative dito, so ang sagot natin dito is seven point twenty one times ten raised to negative three rad. Your rotation natin is counterclockwise. So next naman, kung hanggang ano uh, set with regards to AC, so ibig sabihin ng gandito lang tayo. So meron lang tayong dalawang torque na nag-aak diyan. Yung negative 80 and then yung 70. So rewrite lang natin. 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 4 times 75 times 10 raised to 9. So multiply lang natin ito ng negative 80 times 3 plus 70 times 2. And again, multiply nyo ito sa 1,000. So solving for theta AC, ang makukuha natin is negative 8.49 times 10 raised to negative 3 rad. So again, kapag negative, mali lang tayo ng assumption. So ang sagot natin dito is 8.48 times 10 raised to negative 3 rad. And ang rotation natin is counterclockwise din. So ganito yung sagot nyo dapat for these types of problem. So next example or example number five, a steel shaft of three feet long has a diameter of point ah four inches, is subjected to a torque of fifteen kip per feet. Kip feet determine the maximum shearing stress and the angle of twist. So again, first step natin given and required. So given tayo ng length na 3 feet. So given tayo ng diameter na 4 inches. Given tayo ng torque na 15. Keep per feet. And then uh, value of G. Na 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. So, drawing muna tayo na FBD. So, again, positive yung binigay na torque. So, assumption natin is clockwise positive na tayo. Sabi ko since first meeting. So, FBD natin. So, meron tayo dito ng torque. Is equal to 15. Keep feet. Meron tayo dito ng length na 3 feet. And meron tayong diameter na 4 feet. So, itong radius natin is 2 inches. So, ang unang hinahanap sa atin is maximum tearing stress. So, tau max. Ang formula natin for tau max ay 16t over pi d cube. So, substitute lang natin yung mga given. So, 
So, so 16 times 15. Long, huh? So, 16 times 15. So, nag-multiply uh, din sa keep. Ito is in keep. So, multiply natin into 1,000. And again, ito naman is in feet. So, alam natin na ang ano natin is in, PS, in inches or in PSI. So, ang ano natin dito, yung feet, ang 1 feet natin is 12 inches. So, multiply natin ito into 12 divided by pi times d cube. So, ang diameter natin is 4. So, times 4 raised to 3. Solving for tau max. Ang tau max natin is 14,323.94 PSI. So next na hinahanap sa atin is angle of twist or theta. Theta is equals to TL over JG. So substitute lang natin. So yung tinga natin is 15. So 15,000 or 15 kilopounds per feet. So 15 times 1,000. Then convert natin kasi since ito is feet so multiply natin into 12 para ma uh, in terms of inches natin siya and then yung length natin na 3 feet to convert it naman so multiply lang natin again into 12 and then yung j natin alam naman natin ang formula natin is pi over 32 times d raised to the fourth So yun din natin dito ay 4 inches. So times 4 raised to 4. Multiply natin sa G na 12 times 10 raised to 6. So solving for theta. Ang theta natin is 0 0.02148 rad. Or kapag pina-express sa inyo in terms of degree, ang makukuha nyo dapat na sagot is 1.28 a 1.23 degrees. So, before tayo mag-proceed sa ano, sa next example natin, meron tayo ditong solid non-circular shocks. So, hindi lang naman kasi circular shocks yung meron tayo. Meron tayo mga iba't ibang shape dyan. So, dito meron tayong tatlo. May tatlo akong inintroduce dito. So, bali meron tayong apat na shape ng shock na gagamitin. So, nakalagay dito yung mga formulas natin for tau max and for theta. So again, ito, kung nakikita nyo dito is P, kasi sa ibang libro, ang pag-refer nila sa angle of twist is P, sa iba naman is theta. So ito, wag kayo malilito, yung P na nakikita nyo dito is ito yung angle of twist natin. So nakalagay na dito yung ano natin, mga formula for maximum torsional shearing stress and then angle of twist. So pakitandaan na lang itong anim na formulas na to. And then apply natin ito doon sa susunod natin na sample problem. Sabi dito, a 6061T6 aluminum shaft shown in the figure has a cross-sectional area in the shape of an equilateral triangle. Determine the largest torque T that can be applied to the end of the shaft if the allowable shear stress is 56 megapascal and the angle of twist at its end is restricted to 
0.2 rad. So determine how much torque can be applied to a shaft of a circular cross section made from the same material. So again, meron tayo dito ng dalawang hinahanap. Una is yung maximum torque. And then pangalawa is yung torque natin na i-apply kapag ginawa namang circular cross section. Gumawa tayo ng shaft in circular cross section gamit yung same amount ng material natin dito. So again, first step natin is free body diagram. And then uh, given and required. So given tayo ng tau allowable na 56 MPA. Allowable angle of twist natin na 0 0.02 rad. And then G of, so sabi dito aluminum. So pag tinignan nyo sa reference material natin, doon sa likod na ling Hibler, ang G natin for aluminum is 26 gigapascal. So ano yung required? So yung tau ma at maximum torque natin and then T max natin kapag circular naman. So again, first step is free body diagram. So based dito, so kung i-analyze natin yung figure, ito na rin mismo yung free body diagram natin. So i-redraw nyo lang ito, consider natin yung as F FBD. So based kanina sa pinakita kong chart or table, ang formula natin ng tau max for triangle is, for equilateral triangle is 20T over a cube. Where yung A natin is yung length ng isang leg. So dito, based sa given, sinabi 60 degrees yung isang side. So yan nilang natin dito to. So yung substitute natin. So yung tau max natin, 56 times 10 raised to 6 is equal to 20 times T Divided by A cube or 0 0.04 raised to 3. So yung value natin ng torque for the triangle is 179.2 newton meter. Pero hindi pa yan yung pwede natin i-consider na sagot kasi meron pa tayong pangalawang parameter. So yung second parameter natin is angle of twist. So ipoconsider din natin yon So yung angle of twist natin, theta, sabi ang formula natin is 46 TL over A4G. A raised to 4G. So substitute lang natin. So 46. So nakakuha na natin yung, uh, ahanapin din naman natin dito is yung torque. Times in length natin, 1.2 meters. Divided by uh, yung A raised to 4 natin. So, 0 0.04 raised to 4 times G na 26 times 10 raised to 9. Is equal to may given ba tayo na angle of twist? Yes, meron tayo. 0 0.02 rad. So, 0 0.02. So, solving 40 tayo. So yung T natin is equals to 1,664 divided by 69 or makuha natin is 24.12 Newton meter. So ano yung magiging sagot natin dito? So ito yung magiging sagot natin kasi nga di ba is limited tayo sa angle of twist. So kapag itong 179 yung ginamit natin dito, hindi na natin masusunod yung condition natin with regards doon sa angle of twist. Unlike kung itong mas maliit na value, una, syempre hindi natin pwedeng i-exceed yung maximum shearing stress. So mas maliit ba itong 24.12 dito sa 179? Yes, mas maliit siya. So ito yung magiging sagot natin.
So next ano natin, kapag kinonsider naman natin na ano daw yung pag gumawa, gumamit naman tayo ng circular cross section, gamit yung same amount ng material. So pwede natin sabihin dito na dapat yung area natin for circle Wait lang ha. So, yung next na pinapahanap sa atin is how much torque can be applied to a shaft of a circular cross section made from the same amount of material. Kung meron tayong same na dami ng material na gagamitin, so pwede natin sabihin na ang area dapat ng circle natin ay equal sa area ng triangle natin. So, ano ba ang formula natin for area ng circle? Formula natin dyan is pi r squared. And ano naman yung formula ng area natin sa triangle? 1 half base times height. So 1 half. So yung base natin is 0 0.04. And then ano yung height natin? Hindi man tayo given ng height dito sa figure. Pero given tayo dito ng theta na 60 degrees. So pwede natin yan no, na itong height natin dito is uh, So yung magiging height natin dito is sine function gamit tayo ng So hindi man tayo given dito ng height, pwede pero pero pwede natin sa masol. So multiply lang natin yung base times sin 60. So 0 0.04 sin 60. And then are yung hinahanap? So lipat lang natin. So pag nakuha natin yung sagot dito, divide natin into pi and then take the square root. So yung radius na makukuha natin is 0 0.01485. So again, ito is in terms na ng meters. So ngayon, meron tayong radius. Pwede na natin i-apply ito dun sa dalawang formula natin. Una is for yung allowable, uh, using the allowable shearing stress. And then next naman is yung allowable na angle of twist. So alam natin dito na ito ay T max. So tau max is equal to PC over J is equal to 56 times 10 raised to 6 is equals to T. So yung uh, radius natin is 0 0.01485. 2.01485 divided by yung J na alam naman natin solid siya. Yung ano natin, so apply lang natin yung formula na pi over 32 times D to the fourth. Pero since ang given natin is radius, so multiply muna natin ito na times 2. So 0 0.01485 raised to 4. So solving for T, Yung torque natin yung with regard sa tau max is 288.08 newton meter. Using naman yung angle of twist parameter natin which is 0 0.02 rad. So alam naman natin theta is equal to TL over JG is equal to 0 0.02 divided is equal to so, T times yung length natin na 1.2 meters kasi hindi naman yan magbabago. And then, pi over 32 times 2 times 0 0.01485. Multiply natin sa G na 26 gigapascal times 10 raised to 9. So, ang makukuha nating T dito is 
33.104 newton meter. So again, ito ulit yung magiging sagot natin dito ay mas maliit. Kasi kapag ito mas malaki yung kinonsider natin, pasok lang siya for tau max parameter. Pero with regards dito sa maximum angle or allowable angle of twist, may exceed niya na, hindi na magiging 0.02. So kapag na-exceed natin yung mga allowable values, alam naman natin based sa allowable uh, stress design natin na magsasubject ito sa failure. Kaya itong sagot natin na i-consider natin is itong 33.104 newton meter. So for our last example, magpo-consider tayo dito ng system ng gears na nakakonect with each other or gear ratios kung tawagin. So sabi dito, the two shafts are made of A36 steel, each has a diameter of 25 millimeters. And they are connected using gears fixed to their ends. Their other ends are attached to fixed supports at A and B. And they are also supported by journal bearings at C and D. Which allow free rotation of the shafts along their axis. If a torque of 500 newton meter is applied to gear E as shown, determines the reaction at A and B as well as the angle of as well as the angle of twist at E. So based dito, so ano ba yung mga given values natin? So again, given. So given tayo dito ng torque at E na 500 Newton meter. And then allowable ano uh, G natin is A36 steel. So looking sa likod ng reference book natin, ang G natin for A36 steel is 75 gigapascal. And then ano yung required? So natin PA, yung torque at A natin, yung reaction. Kasi kung torque yung force natin dito, so dapat ang reaction natin is torque din. PB, and then, angle of twist at E. So before tayo mag-drawing ng free body diagram, i-analyze muna natin. So given tayo dito ng large, a larger gear na E and smaller gear na F. So, So, kailangan muna natin mag-establish ng relationship dito. So, dito, ano natin i-sabihin natin? Ito yung gear E. Ito yung gear F. I mean, ito yung gear E. So, kapag nag-rotate tayo dito, so, ang rotation natin dito is counterclockwise. So, kapag nag-rotate tayo dito, ng counterclockwise, ano yung magiging movement nitong gear natin na to? Nasa taas. So kapag i-analyze yung problem natin, so nakikita naman natin dito na interconnecting siya, di ba? So ang nangyayari, dahil dun sa ano nila, nakakonect sila sa each other, kapag nag ito, nagro-rotate ng counterclockwise, ang nagiging rotation ng gear natin sa taas is clockwise. So next naman, pwede natin, next natin i-consider is yung drawing ulit tayo dito. So for example, meron tayo dito, ito yung force natin. Yung applied force natin is nandito. And then ano yung magiging reaction force nung gear natin sa taas? So normally, ang gagawin niya is i-re-resist niya diba yung force natin dito. So ganito yung magiging itsura niya. 
So, kapag nag-rotate tayo dito, again, counterclockwise, sabi natin nag-rotate tayo ng 90 degrees. Kung mag-rotate ka na 90 degrees, counterclockwise, so ito na yung magiging new position natin. Kaya lang, pagdating dito sa gear E, ano yung magiging relationship natin? 45 degrees din ba yung i-rotate niya? Or mean 90 degrees din ba ang i-rotate niya? Hindi. Kasi nga, di ba sabi natin dito, eto, meron tayo ditong, eto, makakabuo pa lang tayo ng 0.5 revolutions dito sa gear E. Pagdating sa gear F natin, is meron na tayong 1 revolution. Kasi nga, di ba, mas malaki yung diameter natin dito sa gear E compared sa gear F. So dito, with this, uh, ano, with this analysis, kung kapag nag-rotate tayo dito ng, 45, uh, ng 90 degrees, so magiging rotation natin dito is 180 degrees. So kapag nag-rotate ito ng clockwise from here, from this point, rotate siya ng clockwise, so ang magiging new position niya is nandito na siya, pataas na. So we can say, magkakaroon tayo dito ng relation na 2 times ng angle of twist ng E natin is equal to 2 angle of twist natin dito sa F. Wait lang, buray lang natin yung ano. And then rewrite na lang natin to. So yun na gaya yung inano ko, we can say that two times the angle of twist natin sa E is equal to angle of twist natin dito sa F. So ngayon, pwede na tayo mag-drawing ng three-body diagram. So ngayon, nasulat na natin yung relation equation or itong relation natin. So pwede na tayo mag-drawing ng three-body diagram. So i-drawing muna natin itong three-body diagram natin sa taas. Pero sabi sa problem natin kasi, di ba, is supported ng bearing journals at C and D. Kaya lang is nag allow lang ito ng free rotation. So pwede na natin hindi i-consider yung mga reaction forces dito sa bearing journal natin. So pwede natin i-consider na isang ano lang to, section FB and section AE. So at section FB, so i-drawing lang natin. So kung meron tayo ditong So kung titignan natin yung ano natin dito, is merong ano yung force na niya-apply natin dito sa F. Ano yung force F natin? So dito, nag-rotate tayo ng counterclockwise, di ba? So paano? So itong gear natin na to, we can assume na ito ay natutulak ng paganto. Tinutulak siya nung gear natin. Nung force mula dito sa gear in natin. So, tawagin natin itong force F. And then, kapag ito, na tinutulak siya ng pag-anito. So, magiging rotation natin dito. We can say na rotation natin dito is pag-anito. Is clockwise. So kailangan itong force natin dito sa sa B sa fixed support B natin kailangan i-resist niya ito. So para i-resist natin to, ang magiging rotation naman nito dapat is counterclockwise yung torque natin sa B. So ngayon meron na tayo nung sa free body diagram ng F and uh, dun sa upper na portion natin, i-drawing naman natin yung dito sa baba. So ngayon kung merong force F dito, so nata-translate niya na force, so ang tendency naman nito is opposite direction, yung i-apply niya dito pagdating sa baba natin. Kaya dito, andito naman yung force F natin. 
Again, based dito sa given, meron tayong 500 newton na torque dito, counterclockwise. So, ito, meron tayong 500. And sabi nga, bearing journal, kaya lang allow free rotation. So, disregard itong journal C. So, kung meron tayo ditong torque na counterclockwise, so, pwede natin i-assume na ang magiging reaction nitong support natin sa A, fixed support A, is magbigay ng torque na rotating clockwise direction. So, ngayon na-drawing natin yung free body diagram. Pwede na tayong magsulat ng mga equations natin of equilibrium. So, summation of torque tayo dito sa A. So, 0 is equal to. So, yung TA natin. So, clockwise positive na tayo ang assumption natin. So, TA. So, ito negat, uh, counterclockwise. So, negative. So, minus 500. And then, meron tayong force na naka-apply dito. Kaya lang, hindi naman tayo pwedeng magsama ng force kasi torque yung pinag-uusapan natin. Paano natin gagawin in terms of torque ito? O wait lang, di ba meron tayo ditong given na diameter or na radius. So ang radius natin dito sabi 100 mm or kapag kinonvert nyo into meter is 0.1 meter. Alam naman natin na ang torque di ba ay force times distance lang. So, ang ano natin dito is force times distance. So, ito, since going to right, ang tendency niya is tinutulak niya itong gear natin to rotate clockwise. Kaya ang sign convention natin dito is positive. So, meron tayong force and then distance natin na 0.1 meter. So, ito is 0.1 F. Pwede natin sabihin na ito yung equation 1 natin. Ngayon, with consideration naman dito, sa pangalawang uh, FBD natin, so for E, I mean for F, pwede natin sabihin na, so summation of torque is equal to zero. So yung TB natin is counterclockwise, so negative TB. And then, may iba pa ba nag-apply na force? Meron, ito lang, di ba? Yung F natin. Na yung force F natin is tinutulak siya to rotate counterclockwise. So again, hindi tayo pwede magsama ng uh, force lang dito. Kasi nga torque, sa mission of torque tayo eh. So to convert this into torque, so given ulit tayo dito ng radius, ang radius natin dito is 50 mm or 0 0.05 meters. So 0 may is equal to negative TB. So since ang tendency nito is to rotate the gear E or gear F in clockwise direction, so ito ay positive. So plus F is equal times 0 0.05. So ilipat lang natin dito, makukuha natin yung TB is equal to 0 0.05 F. And then gawin lang natin whole number yung F natin, ito ay 20 TB is equal to F. Ito ngayon yung equation 2 natin. So ngayon meron na tayong relationship. Nakagaya nito. So pwede natin i-substitute yung equation 2 natin to equation 1. So ang mangyayari, so 500 is equal to TA. So again, kaya naging ganito is inilipat lang natin yung Inilipat natin yung 500 dito sa kabilang side. And then yung F natin, sabi dito 0.1F. So kung alam natin ang F natin is equal to 20 TB, so multiply natin to into 0.1. So magiging natin dito is plus 2 TB. So ito ngayon yung equation 3 natin. So next, so ano na, lipat lang ako sa kabilang sa slide para meron tayong malaking space. So rewrite natin dito yung ano, so meron tayong equation 3, di ba? I-take consideration natin yung unang relationship na ginawa natin, itong 2 theta e 
is equal to theta f. So, substitute natin. So, alam naman natin ang ano yung torque na naka-apply dito sa gear in natin. So, kung babalik tayo dito sa kabila. So, na lang. So, kung babalik tayo dito. So, yung nararamdaman ng gear in natin, alam naman natin na kapag nag-section tayo dito, hindi natin i-consider ito, di ba? Ito nandito sa kabilang side. So, for example, ito. Wait lang, ha? So, kung nag-section tayo dito, ito lang yung torque na kinoconsider natin, di ba? So, yung torque natin dito, ang apply sa kanya is yung TA natin. Pagdating naman sa kabila, kapag nag-section ka dito, so, ang kinoconsider lang naman natin dito is ito lang, yung galing dito sa fixed support B. So, yung torque naman na gagamitin natin dito pagdating sa rad FB natin is Itong TB naman natin. So, balik tayo sa kabilang slide. So, pwede natin sabihin ito, i-rewrite lang natin yung formula na 2 times TA times 1.5 divided by JG is equal to TB times 0.75 divided by JG. So bakit naging ganito? Alam naman natin TL over JD, di ba? So quinary overlay over lang natin dito yung 2. Pero since same material, same diameter yung ano natin, shaft, pwede natin i-cancel out na tong JG. So matitira lang sa atin dito is 2TA times 1.5. Again, san galing yung 1.5 yung length natin dito? Is equal to TB times 0.75 na length naman ng second shock natin dito sa figure. So, ito is magiging 3TA is equal to 0.75TB. So, pwede natin sabihin na ito naman is kukunin, kukunin natin yung TB PB is equal to 40A. So dito, uh, kung lilipat tayo sa kabilang slides, kung babalik tayo, meron tayo di ba nakuha dito na equation 3. So kung ayan yung equation 3 natin, so ito naman is tawagin nating equation 4. So ang gagawin natin, substitute natin yung equation 4 natin dito sa equation 3. So kung meron tayo ditong, sabi dito yung TB natin is 40A. So substitute natin. So sulat lang din natin muna equation 3 dito. So equation 3 natin is TA plus 2TB is equal to 500. Ito yung E3 natin. So substitute E4. Sabi dito ang TB natin is 40A. So TA plus 8TA is equal to 500. So, 9TA is equal to 500. So, solving for TA, ang makukuha natin is 55.55 newton meter. Ngayon, meron na tayong TA. Substitute na natin siya dito sa equation 3 para masolve naman si TB. So, solving for TB, makukuha naman natin is 222.22 newton meters. So, nakuha na natin yung dalawa doon sa pinahanap. So, ano yung next na hanapin natin? Ang next na hanapin natin is yung angle of twist at E. So, alam naman natin na angle of twist natin, ang formula is TL over JG. Kaya lang, anong torque yung gagamitin natin? Kasi may given tayong dalawang torque. Kaya lang, kung titignan natin yung free body diagram, alam naman natin na hindi nagro-rotate freely ito. Itong 500 newton is hindi siya na-apply ng buo dito. Bakit? Kasi merong nagre-resist sa kanya na smaller gear. 
nakina-cancel out naman since opposite direction sila nag-act. nag act So, kina-cancel out nito yung movement nito. So, yung torque na gagamitin natin dito instead of 500 is itong TA. Kasi ba diba, yung TA natin is nare-resist niya yung siya yung nagre-resist ng force or yung kung torque na nararamdaman ng shaft. So, ang TA natin dito is 55.55. So, theta E is equal to 55.55 times length natin, 1.5 divided by So, J, pwede natin i-direct na lang siya dito. So, pi over 32. Given tayo ng diameter na 25 millimeter, convert nyo muna siya into meters, which is 0 0.025. So, raise to 4. Multiply to 75 times 10 raise to 9. Solving for theta E. Theta E natin is 0.2987 rad. Or kapag pinahanap sa inyo in degrees, is 1.66 degrees. So ngayon, nakapag-solve tayo ng sample problem na uh, meron tayong gear ratio na consider. So dito nag-e-end yung discussion for torsion. So dito nag-e-end yung discussion natin for torsion. So meron kayong mga tanong or clarification. Once na napanood nyo na itong video, pwede nyo naman ako i-message through Discord or Facebook para ma-address yung mga concerns ninyo.